just want to give an update on the hospital. Uh, introduce Bill. He's going to be interim CEO, taking over in a couple weeks. Um, answer any questions, dispel any rumors, anything that needs addressed. Um, you know, I, I think we've all known for a while the hospital struggled financially. It's kind of reached a, a crescendo right now. Um, we are trying to work with every branch of government, every agency we can to find, to find the money to keep operations going. And like I said in December, we're still 50-50 whether we can stay open or not. Um, we did engage with a law firm to uh, do a financial restructuring, which um, a couple of things that allows you to do is stay open and restructure your debt. Um, the big things that, that do keep other hospitals from taking us over is, of course, the Oprah's retirement. You can't have that rich a plan when you're in another system. It's You can't have one set of employees get 14% retirement. The other is getting 3% Social Security. It's, it, it's not going to work out well. Um, <coughs> Those bonds, those bonds are about um, four hundred thousand dollars a year. So if we could get those paid off or eliminated, that'd be a, a huge thing. And, and then the um, we, we've talked about this for a long time: the lab fraud and the uh, the EMR conversion. You know, where that that put us such a financial crisis that we've always been behind on the bills and trying to get rid of those bills either through that financial restructuring. We'll, we'll, we'll give a good opportunity for someone to come in here and take the hospital over. So, um, kind of talk about uh, Bill Cherry here. He is from uh, originally from Oklahoma, lives in Dallas, Texas now. Thirty years in in um, executive leadership. He's worked in Connecticut, all over the country. Um, he was a uh, college wrestler at Oklahoma University, the Sooners. Um, so, um, very impressed with his character, his intellect, and he has a huge network, national network. You know, we pick up a phone, we can talk to an expert on this business deal, this negotiation, these contracts, stuff like that. Um, he's really calmed me down. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's basically me and Addie at the hospital in that whole wing for the last six months. So, um, He's came in and take a lot of the heavy lifting off of me. Um, we're trying to figure out a timeline to hand off. We think in a couple of weeks, so two to three weeks, somewhere in there. Um, we did have a board meeting last night. Um, kind of discussed the options of the hospital moving forward. We got a follow up one tonight. The new details. Um, we're trying to get sorted out to give them to give them the best chance to vote on on the future of the hospital. So, is there any questions at all? Roy, this divergent policy where our EMS is not going to Hicksville, um, is that short term, long term, is it? Um, yeah, so it's intermediate. That? So if we don't have full staff, then we go on divergent, which is, um, it, it's the legal phrase, it's not the best thing to do, but we always got to think of the patient safety first. And, you know, if they stop there, we don't have a staff to take care of them. And we don't have a transport, which is still hard to get to Fort Wayne, Defiance, Bryan. Then it, it's safest for that patient to just stay in the ambulance and go straight to that next year. It's you know it, it does make us look bad. We're not happy with that look, but we can't have our nurses and respiratory therapists, X-ray techs work 70 hours a week, week in, week out. It's it's just not safe. So I, I think the village has been working with EMS to kind of ramp up their their coverage on off hour and weekends. I don't know if that plan's been finalized yet, um, but it's it's temporary. You never you never want to go on permanent divergence. So what percentage of um, your employees are still at Community Memorial? How many of you, what percentage have you lost? Um, For whatever reason. Most is uh, fear of the place closing, but I think we were at 170 or 68 right now. 
the vast majority is the, the employees out of the position offices. Probably 62 of them were connected to the doctor, so they followed them to the new job. Have all the doctors left? Uh, Dr. Grohouse is still here. He does surgeries on Wednesday. Dr. Justice still has his clinic on Thursday, surgeries on Tuesday. Uh, Parkview setting up ready to rent space there. Um, so she'll still do occupational medicine. Um, the rest have signed contracts and leaving at, at different times. Because like an employee can leave and get a job the next week. A doctor leaves, there's a 90 day window. Because they won't start until all the background checks done, the insurances are verified, credentialed. So I, I get it, I couldn't get a 90 days without a paycheck. Um, Oh, no. Yeah, so that, that's kind of, I think December is when most of them resigned or accepted other jobs. I mean, they were, help, they were holding on to, to see if we could get that financial backing. So, I mean, mm -hmm. they were beyond loyal to the hospitals. Going back to the ER, boy, I didn't quite understand what you were talking about. Divergence is just the, the ambulance is coming in, going somewhere else, the ER is closed? Or? ER's open. So if you, you walk in, someone drives you, they'll take care of you. But it's the higher end stuff, like uh, yeah, car heart attack, car accident. Um, it's much better for like the lifeline just to meet the ambulance, take off from there, the ambulance drive straight. Because it, it's one of the hidden issues in rural healthcare is transportation. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've sat on patients three days waiting for transport um, and some hospital like there's a one famous one of the patient they were looking for a um, mental health bed for a pediatric patient seven weeks in an ER so that was in Pennsylvania so it's not you know, anywhere near here but it, 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 it's a crisis spirit uh, transport out of um, Van Ward did buy the closed business in um, defiance so they have moved us up on the so transfers are better. Brian was moving a, a wagon over, our park was moving a wagon over to Brian. So, you know, Dr. Black delivers babies there. And the things that can handle a Brian that maybe doesn't need a level one trauma to Fort Wayne are easier to pick up. It, it's, it's, a, it's a national and state issue. It's one of the uh, side effects of COVID was why break my back transport patients when I can make the same at McDonald's. You know what I mean? It's, Insurance has to fix that, and Medicare has to. Yeah, every run you lose money on, so it's a hard business model. So if there's a car accident and our ambulance shows up and it's bad, and you have to send them to Parkview, Toledo, do we have other ambulances? We have a backup ambulance. Our issue is staffing. Um, we've operated on four full-time two part-time but they all have other jobs some of our full-time they're going to college they're taking other courses to advance their careers um, <clears throat> so we have to rely a lot of times on sure what is a backup there is talks again about doing a joint effort between Delaware Township Sherwood Hicksville maybe combining our services because all of our EMS's are in the same boat with staffing we can't find staff um, at the level of pay, the benefits are okay, but um, you know, a lot of our runs are lift assistance or a nursing home transport from like the nursing home to the hospital. You know, you do get the heavy runs, the ALS runs, those are your heart attacks, major, major things going on with the patient care, you know, accidents, things of that nature where, you know, we've started looking into hiring more people. Uh, we have ads in the paper, but we, even when we're so blessed to have Hicksville be local that we've been able to operate on basic EMTs, basically. You get them in the squad, you get them to the hospital. Where you look at places like Edgerton, Sherwood, Antwerp, they have to transport a lot farther. So they have to hire higher degree of EMTs to be in the squad, just due to the fact, because you don't know what kind of patient you're gonna be called out for. So. You need the advance to the paramedics to be in the squad in case you do have to travel that 30 minute drive to, you know, Bryan, Defiance, Fort Wayne, Auburn, all depending on where the patient pickup is. So 
they do a lot of corresponding back with the hospitals in regards to the patient care. We've upgraded our system where once they hook up the monitors, the hospitals now can even read, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, EKGs, all that stuff, it's instant instead of cell phones and people trying to work on patient and calling. And so uh, we've upped our game a little bit with those kind of monitoring systems, but still staffing. And from what I've gathered, correct me if I'm wrong, Roy and, and Bill, but EMS has not been a money-making entity within within hospitals. I know years ago, before you guys were even here, you know, past CEOs of the hospital talked about housing the EMS in the hospital as part of their structure. You know, having the the squad right there with the paramedics and the EMTs, but it never panned out. So <clears throat> there's times with other facilities. You just keep that. I'm sorry, but. I know of other operations that they're short staffed and, and they're for large hospitals and they don't have the staff because they are so big and they are so spread out that their their paramedics are spread out through other of the, the other facilities. So it's an impact. But bottom line is patient care and getting the patients to the proper facility for, for treatment. Yeah. So when we do go on to emergence, all the EMS, all the nine one ones are all contacted. It's constant conversation. So there isn't that extra 15 minutes. I mean, you know, heart muscles still minutes. If it's a heart attack, we want to get them to the fastest care. So it, it's, um, I know they update probably two to three times a day. So it's, we see the reports going through, so. Do, uh, you still getting the new MRI machine or? Yep. And it, it, it's just a tedious project because you have to have the EPA sign off on it. And they've got the old one tore out and the rental in place right now. So we're kind of in that gap waiting to, for the new one to show up. How about the bargain bin and all that? Is there any plans for the hospital goals? Or? No, I don't think so. I think it's like a general conversation was it's such a benefit to the hospital if a, a private organization did take over the hospital was could it could be converted to be part of the a community group to where the funds stay in the community and go to you know the, the pool project little league certain things like that i mean it does very well financially for and, and, and those ladies do put in a ton of work and it, it, it does serve a good do you, I think have, do you have a doctor at Antwerp now or not? Uh, Dr. Wiley is still there. Uh, there is a group interested in buying the building. We'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, we want we want to keep that, that office somehow with the primary care if we can. Yeah. Any other questions? We sure appreciate everything. I, I, I do have guilty remorse. I feel like I could have done more if I came earlier or knew more earlier. But I mean, I, at the end of the day, I feel like I gave everything. And the support from this group and other groups just, you know, truly touched me. Because it's, <laughs> it's not an easy job to get beat up seven days a week. <laughs> and smile. <laughs> Younger, we've been fighting on the alley, but now I just can't take it. <laughs> So do we get to hear from Mr. Cherry and his plan? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can add much more. Um, yeah, so uh, again, Bill Cherry, so just Bill. Uh, and, and again, I think Roy has done a tremendous job uh, over the last several years uh, under extremely difficult circumstances. So I'm uh, very thankful for everything that he has done. Uh, as far as plans, uh, again, I think we're looking to see, um, you know, what funding we can get, uh, what other potential partners are out there, uh, er looking for, you know, any possible way to uh, keep the hospital open, uh, keep services here local, uh, you know, and, and understanding the value of the hospital and healthcare services here in the local community. So, uh, you know, we, we will do everything we can. Uh, you know, it, it is 
difficult circumstances. So, you know, at this point, uh, I would echo what Roy said. It's uh, really kind of a 50-50 proposition. Uh, but, you know, we will, uh, you know, give it our best effort and uh, see if we can make it uh, successful. Have you been through something like this before? Uh, I have been through a situation that has similar components to it. So, you know, kind of every situation has its own little unique pieces. Uh, you know, this one has some of the history that is, uh, makes it very unique uh, that I don't know, if, you know, if anyone will ever see all, <laughs> all of these same things kind of uh, in one circumstance. Uh, but, uh, but yes, I mean, I've, I've worked with a number of hospitals that have been in uh, financially uh, challenging circumstances. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll say that in most instances uh, have, uh, you know, come out successfully on the other end of it. Uh, so, you know, ho hopefully this will be another one of those uh, success stories. Uh, but, uh, again, I mean, I, I think the next, uh, you know, 30, 60 days are going to be really critical uh, times. And, you know, where, where a lot of that future will kind of be determined. I applaud you for taking on such a such a task and thank you. you have our support thank you very much i really appreciate that and, and look forward to uh you know getting to know each of you a little bit better and uh, you know uh, always happy to have a conversation so please don't hesitate uh, if you have any you know, questions comments uh, to reach out lunch on tuesday right <laughs> I, I will uh, put it down in my calendar. You can get away from the madness and come into yes. this madness, okay? All right. Well, thank you all.